Alright, welcome to part three and our segment on Indigenous Americas. Um, in this video we're going to be looking at the art of the Aztecs. Um, in 1978 an electrical worker in Mexico City came across a remarkable discovery. While digging near the main plaza they found a finely carved stone monolith that displayed a dismembered and decapitated woman. And this is what this is what it looks like. Immediately they knew they found something special. Shortly after, the archaeologists realized that the monolith displayed the Mexica Aztec goddess um Coyulcali <laughs> Coyulcali C O Y O L X A U H Q U I or Bells Her Cheeks. Bells Her Cheeks. Um and the way this is spelled, it says bells, the word bells, dash her, dash cheeks, like you pinch her cheeks. <laughs> the sister of the Mexican, of the Mexica's um, patro, patron god. Um, hits Zilpatuli, which means hummingbird left, who killed his sister when she attempted to kill their mother. This monolith led to the discovery of the Templo Mayor, the main Mexican temple located in the sacred precinct of the former Mexica capital known as Tenochtitlan, um, now Mexico City. Remember, we had talked about Tenochtitlan um, when we were looking at um, um, the Spanish um, colonial um, art. Um, and we had um, looked at that codex um, that depicted um, the city of Tenochtitlan. Um, it was um, it was done for the viceroy of um, New Spain or the Spanish colony at the time. So we're now we're actually looking at the art of the Aztecs. And just to clarify, a monolith is um, a sort of a large upright um, stone. Um, it's a little bit different than a, a stele. Um, I don't think it. Anyway, they are sort of similar, but this is referred to as a monolith, and it's 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 usually probably meant to be part of another um, architectural element, like a pillar or, or column as well. So um, this is the view of the Templo Mayor excavation today in the center of, in the center of what is now Mexico City, uh, and, and this is the discovery of where the monolith um, occurred as um, they were digging. So we're really looking at some reconstructions of um, the site of um, Tenochtitlan um, and some of the temple structures there. The city of Tenochtitlan was established in 1325 on, the, uh, on an island in the middle of a lake, um, Texcoco, uh, much of which has since been filled in to accommodate Mexico City, which now exists on the site. Between 1325 and 1519, the Templo Mayor was expanded, enlarged, and reconstructed during um, seven main building phases, which likely corresponded um, with different rulers, um, or Tatalani, um, T-L-A-T-O-A-N-I, which refer, means speaker. So that was um, their name for their ruler. Um, taking office. Sometimes new construction was the result of environmental problems such as flooding. Located in the sacred precinct at the heart of the city, the Templo Mayor was positioned at the center of the Mexica capital and thus the entire empire. The capital was also divided into four main quadrants with the Templo Mayor at the center. This design reflects the Mexica cosmos which was believed to be encompassed um, to be composed of four parts structured around the nave, the navel of the universe, um, sometimes referred to as the axis mundi, A-X-I-S-M-U-N-D-I. -I. We talked about this before, the axis mundi. And the axis mundi, um, A-X-I-S, and then another word, M-U-N-D-I, um, in certain belief philosophies and religions um, represents um, the world center, or a connection or some sort of point that connects um, heaven and earth. Um, and, and many different um, religious philosophies might um, have their own version of the Axis Mundi. And so um, the Temple Mayor might have um, sort of been representing um, the Aztec um, Axis Mundi. The Temple Mayor was approximately 90 feet high and covered in stucco. Two grand staircases um, assessed 
Aquan temples, which were dedicated to two deities. Um, one of these deities represented um, water and rain, and his name is spelled T-L-A-L-O-C. I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I do such an awful job. Um, and so he was, um, or this god was associated with agricultural um, fertility. The other god represents, um, you know, that hummingbird god, um, H-U-I-T-Z-I-L-O-P-O-C-H-T-L-I, -O -O um, who was the patron deity of Mexico. And he was associated, um, or this god was associated with um, warfare, fire, and the sun. And so paired together on the Temple Mayor, um, these two deities symbolize the Mexica concept um, of a term that um, translates into burnt water. Um, and the term is called A-T-L-T-L-A-C-H-I-N-O-L-L-I. Um, and so this was supposed to um, represent um, warfare, the primary way in which the Mexica acquired their power and wealth. So we're going to be looking at some excava excavations done at um, the Huzolo Pochotili, um, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, temple. So in the reconstruction diagram, this is the area that we're going to be looking at. Um, and some are, um, artifacts found um, around or outside the temple. So in the center of this temple was a sacred stone. Near the top, um, there are these um, standard bearer figures um, that sort of decorate the stairway. And a standard bearer was um, some sort of officer, um, soldier, or some sort of military official that was responsible for holding the standard of the military unit, which was usually like a flag. Um, and, and so they were responsible for holding it and um, displaying it. Um, they likely probably held paper banners and feathers for their standard. Serpent balustrades, um, and, and these are sort of, um, you know, this sort of um, railing. Um, we see these in other architectural elements. Um, we saw this with the neoclassical um, architecture of Monte Jefferson's Monticello. And so let me show you an example of a, a balustrade. Um, so this is probably how you guys would recognize it, um, and it's usually some sort of um, railing, um, and, it, and it has these sort of um, bolsters, and you usually see these on some sort of, as a way to sort of decorate a terrace or um, a, a porch or something like that. Um, and so for um, the Aztecs, let me go back to the slide. Um, so they actually use these sort of serpent forms to kind of stand in as, uh, as their sort of um, balustrades or straws. And then there would have been um, an additional two sort of serpent um, heads or um, figures that would be at the base of the stairwell of the temple. Um, after the Spanish, Spanish conquest in 1521, the Templo Mayor was destroyed. Um, and what did survive remained buried. The stones um, were reused to build structures like the cathedral in the newly founded capital of the Viceroyalty of Spain um, that existed between 1521 and 1821. So we're going to return back to the Coyolaki monolith, which was the most famous object um, that decorated um, 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 the temple. Um, um, it was found at the base of the stairs. So it would have been found in this area when we look back at the, the diagram. So the monolith was originally painted and carved in low relief. Um, the Kolaki monolith is approximately 11 feet in diameter and displays the female deity, um, Kololaki, or bells on her face. Um, golden bells decorate her cheeks. I think you can see them right here. Um, feathers and balls of down adorn her hair, and she wears elaborate earrings, fanciful sandals and bracelets, and a serpent belt with a skull attached at the back. Monster faces are found at her joints, connecting her to other female deities, 
some of who some of whom are associated with trouble um, and chaos. Otherwise, Kolaki is shown naked with um, sort of kind of saggy breasts um, and a stretched belly to indicate that she was a mother. Um, for the Mexica, nakedness was considered a form of humiliation and also defeat. She is also decapitated and dismembered. Her head and limbs are separated from her torso and are organized in a pinwheel shape. Pieces of bone stick out from her limbs. So it's a, it's a pretty graphic um, sort of gory detail of this sort of um, mutilation of this, of this deity. Um, so also, I want you to think of some cross currents, uh, especially when we're looking at um, the representation of what the monolith would have looked like when it was colored. Again, think back maybe to ancient Greek, um, how they also colored um, their um, stone um, marble statues. So the monolith relates to an important myth, um, the birth of the Mexica patron deity. Um, Huzulo Pachitili. Apparently, um, Huzulo Pachitili's mother, um, Kotleku, which means snakes her skirt, and I'll spell that C O A T L I C U E, became pregnant one day from a piece of down that entered her skirt. And down is, is sort of like a feather, okay? Um, you know, like, down, like a down comforter or a down pillow. Um, her daughter, um, Koloki um, became angry when she heard that her mother was pregnant, and together with 400 b brothers called the Zinto Hu Zahu, <laughs> Z, sorry, C E N T Z O N H U I T Z N A H U A, attacked their mother. At the moment of the attack, Hu Zilopochitili emerged fully clothed and armed to defend her mother on the mountain called Cote Peck, or Snake Mountain, C-O-A-T-E-P-E-C. Eventually, Huzulo Pachitili defeated his sister, um, then beheaded her and threw her body down the mountain at which her body broke apart. So again, this sort of, again, other cross currents. I mean, we think about these myths and um, sort of mythology, which I think is a universal theme um, that many cultures share. You know, again, referring back to ancient Greek culture, um, you know, the mythology of the gods and goddesses. And, and again, these sort of feuding gods and, and often their gods sort of acted very human and um, sometimes were very vain and, and destructive and, so, you know, really think about maybe comparing and contrasting um, these different cultures and these sort of different myths. You know, obviously family rivalry is, is something, um, especially sibling rivalry is, is something that um, is often wrote about in literature and um, often depicted in other forms of art. So the monolith is uh, portraying the moment in the myth after Huzulo Pochitili vanquished um, Koloki and threw her body down the mountain. By placing this sculpture at the base of Huzulo Pochitili's temple, the Mexica effectively transformed the temple into a Cotepec, C-O-A-T-E-P-C. Um, again, that translates um, into a, a snake mountain. Many of the temple's decorations and sculptural program also support this identification. Um, again, the snake um, balustrades that we looked at earlier, the serpent heads, um, identify the temple as a snake mountain or Cotepec. Um, it is possible that the standard bearer figures recovered at the Templo Mayor symbolize Huzolopochitili's 400 brothers, Ritual performances that occurred at the Templo Mayor also support the idea that the temple symbolically represented Cotepec. For instance, the ritual of Panque Zalatizili, um, P A N Q U E T Z A L I Z T L I, um, Panque Talazili, I guess that's, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, which translates into banner raising, celebrated the Huzulo Pachitili's triumph over Kaloki um, and her 400 brothers. People offered gifts to the deity, danced and ate um, tamales, 
um, during the ritual, war captives would have been painted blue, um, were killed on the sacrificial stone, um, and then their bodies rolled down the staircase to fall atop um, the Kolaki monolith um, to reenact this myth associated with the Cotepec or the Snake Mountain. For the enemies of the Mexica and those people the Mexica ruled over, this ritual was a powerful reminder to submit to Mexica authority. Clearly, the decorations and rituals associated with Templo Mayor um, um, connotated the power of the Mexica Empire and their patron de deity, Huzolopochtili. And I am so sorry. I keep saying the term Mexica because I'm getting my notes from different sources. And Mexica, M-E-X-I-C-A, really is just another name for Aztec. And I really should, really should be saying Aztec, so I apologize. I really should go back and record this and substitute that term, but I'm not going to because I don't have time. So when I say Mexica, I'm referring to the Aztec people. Um, we'll look at some different offerings that were made at the Templo Mayor. Um, over a hundred ritual um, deposits and artifacts um, were found um, that have been associated with the Templo Mayor. Some offerings contained items related to water, like coral shells, crocodile skeletons, and vessels depicting um, Tlacoc. Other deposits related to warfare and sacrifice um, containing items like human skull masks with obsidian blade tongues and noses with sacrificial knives. Um, many of these offerings also contained objects from faraway places, likely places from which the Aztec people collected tribute. Um, some offerings demonstrate um, the Aztecs' awareness of the historical and cultural traditions in Mesoamerica. For instance, they buried an Olmec mask made of jadeite, as well as others um, from Tito Hukan, a uh, northeast um, territory of modern-day Mexico, um, known for its huge monuments and dating roughly from the first century until the seventh century. The Olmec mask was made over a thousand years prior to the Aztecs, and its burial at Templo Mayor suggests that the Aztecs found it precious and perhaps historically significant. Um, the Olmec um, were the first major civilization in Mexico. Um, they lived in the tropical lowlands of south-central Mexico, what is today um, the present states um, of Veracruz and Tabasco. And um, it's speculated that this mask was probably worn around the neck as a pendant and, and may have um, given the wearer a sort of new identity, um, perhaps that of an ancestor or some sort of god or deity. Um, it was made by the Olmecs, um, again, which is probably one of the earliest known settled civilizations of Central America. Um, and Olmec works have very, have sort of certain um, stylistic conventions, um, especially in these sort of masks that have been found, um, these sort of heavy lidded eyes, um, and usually this sort of frown on the face. All right, so we're going to look at one more artifact from the um, Temple Mayor. Um, this is the Aztec Sunstone or Calendar Stone. Um, it depicts um, the five consecutive worlds of the sun um, from Aztec mythology. The stone is not therefore in any sense a functioning calendar, but rather it's an elaborately carved solar disk which the Aztecs and other Mesoamerican cultures um, use to represent rulership. So at the top of um, the sunstone is um, something called a date glyph. Um, and a glyph is, is kind you know, like it's um, sort of a symbol or, or, or pictogram sort of representing um, a, an idea. Um, and this translates into 13 reed, R-E-E-D. Um, and this is supposed to represent both the beginning of what they thought was the present sun um, which was supposed to be the fifth and final one according to their mythology. Um, and then the actual date um, during this period, 1427 CE, and, and this was supposed to legitimize the rule of um, the Iskot, um, who took power in that year, um, creating a bond between div you know, the divine and mankind. Now we've seen this before, we've obviously seen this with um, um, 
Mesopotamia um, and, you know, certain um, rulers, um, you know, seeking to um, make their rulership um, legitimate by sort of aligning themselves with, with some sort of um, deity or sort of, sort of some sort of divine um, presence. And, and so, again, we can definitely make some cross currents there. Um, and it's Coat. I said it wrong before. It's spelled I T Z C O A T I. Um, that's actually a person. Um, he was uh, supposedly the fourth king um, of the Aztecs and was became the first emperor um, of the Az Aztec civilization. Really, sort of started um, the the Aztec civilization, or, or really the golden period of the Aztec civilization. And, and so this is marking um, his um, rulership. The stone was discovered in December 1790 um, CE in the central plaza of Mexico City and now resides in the National Museum of Anthropology in that city. The richly carved basalt stone was once part of the architectural complex of the Temple Mayor and measures about um, three and a half um, meters in diameter, um, and it's about 98 centimeters thick. Let me see if I have a diagram. So here you can see this is a scale. <laughs> um, so just to give you a sense of how big it is, um, it weighs about 25 tons. The stone was originally, would have originally had been laid flat on the ground and possibly anointed with blood sacrifices. When it was discovered, the stone was lying flat and upside down, perhaps in an attempt to prevent the final cataclysm, um, which supposedly was um, the fall of the fifth and final sun. Um, as the Aztecs would, as the Aztec world fell apart following the attack um, from the old world. All right. So we'll kind of break it down and, and look at some of the iconography that we see represented. Um, at the center of the stone is a representation of either the sun god um, Tanatua, <laughs> T-O-N-A-I-T-I-U-H, the day sun, or Yahu Tanatua, um, the night sun, and that's spelled Y-O-H-U-A-L-T-O-N-A-T-I. UH, or the primordial um, earth monster um, Tal Tekhuti, um, T L A L T E C U H T L I, um, in the latter case representing the final destruction of the world when the fifth sun fell um, to the earth. The tongue is perhaps also um, a sacrificial knife sort of sticking out and it suggests again this idea of thirst for blood and probably um, this is what we're looking at here I should zoom in a little bit um, you know these ideas of these blood rituals that we've seen from some of these other um, meso cultures so we'll zoom in just a little bit um, so let's look at some of the sculptural motifs in the center of um, this calendar um, and you really can see how elaborately carved um, and meticulous um, these different um, decorative um, icons are um, and basically most of these represent um, different components of the Aztec cosmology. In the center of the monolith is the face of the solar deity um, Tona Tehua which appears inside the glyph um, for movement. Um, um, and um, the name of the current era. Um, the central figure is, is shown holding, again, this idea of a human heart um, in each of its clawed hands. Again, I know it's kind of hard to see. And um, again, the tongue is supposed to represent this um, sort of sacrificial knife um, or stone knife um, referred to as a te. Kapat, T E C P A T. Um, there also around the central sun um, deity are other um, icons that represent the four previous suns, or in this case, the different eras of the Aztec um, um, culture. The four squares that surround the central deity represent um, 
what is referred to as the four previous suns, again, these different eras um, in the Aztec um, history, which um, precede the present era known as movement. Um, and each era ended with the destruction of the world and humanity, which was then recreated in the next era. Um, the top right square represents um, Jaguar, um, the day on which the first era ended and having lasted um, 676 years due to the appearance of monsters that devoured all of humanity. The top left square shows um, this idea of wind, um, the date on which after 364 years, hurricane winds destroyed the earth and humans were turned into monkeys. The bottom left square shows um, rain. Um, this era lasted um, 312 years before being destroyed by rain or fire, which transformed humanity into turkeys. <laughs> the bottom right square represents water, an era that lasted 676 years and ended when the f world was flooded and all of humans were turned into fish. Place among these four squares are three additional dates. Um, and again, these are represented by um, these symbols um, related really to, to this idea of nature and the earth. Flint, um, rain, and, um, and sometimes animals, monkey. Um, and it's been suggested that um, these dates um, may have been both historical um, as well as having a sort of cosmic significance as well. Um, I'm going to refer back to this um, diagram because I think it is easier to see. Um, I also wanted to talk about the band running immediately around the sun, um, and it's um, segmented into 20 Aztec day names, um, hence the calendar stone name. Um, and then there's a, another decorative ring surrounded by another ring depicting symbols which represent turquoise and jade, again, these sort of earth elements. Um, and these are symbols of the equinox and solstice and the colors of heaven. Um, the two heads at the bottom of the center um, represent fire serpents, and their bodies run around the perimeter of the stone, with each um, ending in a tail. The four cardinal and intercardinal directions are also indicated with larger um, and lesser um, points of um, points, respectively. So again, when you go back and study, I really do suggest maybe kind of zooming in and, and really taking a, a look at um, these different um, sort of images and again, these sort of anthropomorphic forms, again, these sort of human forms and also zoomorphic forms, these animal forms, and they kind of sort of undulate and fold into each other, which is a stylistic convention that we've seen with other early Mesoamerican cultures. All right. This is our last object that we're going to be looking at um, in relation to the Aztec culture. So this is a very elaborate headdress, a feathered headdress that is attributed to the ruler Moctezuma or Moctezuma II. Um, he, uh, this name is translates into angry like a lord, and he was the last fully independent ruler of the Aztec Empire before um, the civiliz civilization collapsed um, at the hands of the Spanish in the early 16th century. Um, in 1502, um, he would rule as an absolute monarch until 1520, um, during which time he expanded um, the Aztec Empire and was considered a god by his people in a manifestation and perpetuar of, of the sun. Um, and again, we can really go back and sort of look at other cultures, Egypt, um, definitely um, Mesopotamia in terms of how um, different rulers would try to align themselves um, with a deity to authenticate their rulership. So again, this headdress is attributed to Moctezuma, although there's no really concrete evidence to do so. It really is a magnificent headdress. Um, and it was probably part of a collection of artifacts given by Moctezuma to General Cortez, um, who passed on these gifts to Charles V, the Spanish king at the time. Um, so the headdress is made from 415 green feathers from a bird called the Quetzal. And I'm probably saying that wrong again. It's spelled Q-U-E-T-Z-A-L. 
um, another bird, um, blue cotinga, and um, pink flamingo feathers. And then it's further embellished with gold beads and jade discs. And so the actual, this is the bird, the, the quetzal that I was talking about earlier. And actually the most of the headdress is made um, from um, this sacred bird. Um, so it consists of 400 long green feathers. And so these are the feathers that they're talking about. Um, and, and during, um, and this is the male um, bird. And during the mating season, they actually grow these two feathers um, in order to attract a mate. Um, and so to actually, you know, it's very rare, so they only grow two of these feathers, and so to make an entire headdress um, from these feathers um, must have been very extravagant. Um, the number 400 symbolizes eternity, um, and this really is the only known feather headdress in the world. And again, here's the image so that you could see it. Um, so that's it in terms of the Aztec. Um, please stay tuned for <laughs> part... Four. Um, hopefully um, we'll get through um, the indigenous Americas and then we'll return back to looking at um, some Western, um, modern and contemporary Western art as well. Um, again, I also encourage you to look at the Khan Academy videos um, associated with each of these units.